Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Marks from GoToHealth Media. This is video three in our series, How Project 2025 Will Change Healthcare in the United States. Today, we're focusing on the impact on the Affordable Care Act, the ACA, otherwise known as Obamacare. You can see the complete list of videos we are producing in this evidence-based series. Our intent is to educate you with facts. We hope you like our videos and will subscribe to our channel. Thanks in advance for your support. You'll remember during his first term, President Trump vowed to get rid of Obamacare and replace it with something better and cheaper. That was never defined and never happened. It's now defined under Project 2025. Project 2025 once again advocates gutting major provisions of the ACA. There are two areas we cover in this video where Project 2025 has great effects on Obamacare. The first is having states as the primary regulators of medical care, not the federal government. And the second is moving from open-ended federal support to block grants. We'll describe more as we go along. Having states as primary regulators. Conservatives in general believe in smaller federal government believing that regulations are best set closer to the local population with local interests in mind. Federalists, by contrast, believe that the federal government can set national standards to avoid a patchwork of policies and deliver consistent policies and services across all 50 states. We can see this patchwork displayed in abortion policies across our 50 states following the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Project 2025, being the conservative promise, imagines that states should be the primary regulators of medical care. The problem is that states' abilities to regulate and provide services in healthcare is very uneven. As we saw in video two, red states have significantly less personal incomes and tax revenues. Health services and health outcomes are measurably worse in red states versus blue states in general. The ACA provides generous as-needed funding from the federal government to support health insurance marketplaces where individuals and small businesses can compare and purchase insurance plans. States have the option to create and manage their own marketplaces or use the federal marketplace. The ACA also provides federal grants. States received federal grants to set up and operate their marketplaces, reducing the initial financial burden of establishing these new systems. The ACA also provides federal support for consumer protections and cost control measures. By increasing the number of insured individuals, the ACA has helped states reduce the financial strain on public hospitals and clinics that provide care to uninsured patients. With more residents covered by insurance, states have seen improvements in public health, leading to lower long-term health care costs associated with untreated conditions and emergency care. Community health centers. The ACA provided significant state funding to expand and support community health centers, which play a crucial role in delivering primary care services to underserved populations. This funding has allowed states to improve access to health care in rural and low-income areas, reducing disparities and long-term health care costs. Investment in community health centers has strengthened the overall public health infrastructure, leading to better health outcomes and reduced strain on emergency departments. Community health centers offer affordable primary care services making healthcare accessible to individuals who might otherwise forego medical care due to cost. Comprehensive services. These centers provide a wide range of services, including preventive care, dental care, mental health services, and substance abuse treatment, all at reduced costs or on a sliding fee scale based on income. There's also federal incentives for accountable care organizations and improved care coordination. The ACA promoted the formation of Accountable Care Organizations, ACOs, groups of healthcare providers that voluntarily come together 
to provide coordinated care to Medicare patients. States benefit from improved healthcare quality and cost savings as ACOs focus on preventive care and reducing unnecessary hospitalizations. We also benefit from enhanced care quality. ACOs aim to improve care coordination and quality, ensuring that patients receive the right care at the right time. This approach helps patients manage chronic conditions more effectively and reduces the likelihood of costly hospital readmissions. As Project 2025 advocates having states being the primary regulators of medical care, all the federal funding just described would be replaced by federal block grants. So what's a federal block grant? It's a fixed amount afforded by the federal government to each state. No longer would the states receive what they need, but be limited by block grants determined by a power yet to be named. The reduced funding by the federal government would not be allocated in full to the states, but rather be viewed as a savings mechanism at the federal level. These savings in federal budget could be used to expand greater tax savings to wealthy individuals, as was accomplished in Trump's first administration. As we saw in video two, red states versus blue states, red states in general have lower household incomes, lower tax revenues, and poorer health conditions and health outcomes. To review, the move of primary responsibility for healthcare management and regulation from the federal government to the states would create a patchwork of varied state policies and funding for medical care, reduce the uniformity of care across states, increase the number of uninsured individuals burdening hospitals with more urgent cases, greatly affect red states where household incomes and tax revenues are lower, necessitating even poorer health outcomes. This would also threaten the existence of insurance marketplaces that provide coverage for individuals and small businesses. It would reduce the coverage, quantity of funding, quality of care for community health centers, which provide important public health services. It would reduce or eliminate funding for accountable care organizations, which coordinate care for patients with Medicare and it would create an inefficient patchwork of states' abilities to respond to healthcare emergencies. While the ACA focused on expanding coverage, implementing consumer protections, and controlling costs through government intervention, Project 2025 emphasizes market-based solutions, deregulation, and reduced federal involvement. This shift could lead to decreased coverage, particularly for low-income individuals, and increased variability in the quality and comprehensiveness of health insurance plans. While federal versus state control over health care is a discussion worth exploring, the provisions of Project 2025 would have serious negative consequences on health care as provided by the Affordable Care Act. Please like this video so more people see it. Thank you in advance. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you benefit from all the videos in this series. This has been Jonathan Marks with GoToHealth Media.